Star Wars, released in 1977, breathed new life into science fiction cinema, making the space adventure movie popular again, causing studios to take notice and produce their own brand of space fantasy adventure. Some were great, and some not so great. But through it all, as children growing up, we had so much to enjoy, not just on film, but on TV as well. There were many television shows that were capitalizing on the success of Star Wars. But to me, there was one science fiction series that stood out from the rest, called Battlestar Galactica. The original concept and idea for Battlestar Galactica was in its early stages, way before Star Wars was even conceived. Its creator, Glenn Larson, conceived the show in the late 1960s, which was originally titled Adam's Ark. One of the first projects that I attempted to take to Universal, to uh, a guy in business affairs who took a liking to me, was a project called Adam's Ark. His original story was about the destruction of Earth and its human survivors traveling into outer space to find a new planet to settle on. Larson would change the basic premise of Battlestar Galactica. I love the idea of going all the way back out in space and bringing the remnants of that world and trying to find Earth. It was like reversing the thing and the battles and things that they would meet on the way. My premise was simple, and again, it's like if you take something to a network, it's just, can we put a Mercedes grill on it, you know, or this or that. I thought we had a, a, a pretty good premise. I really love the mythology and the theology of there are those who believe that life here may have begun out there beyond the stars where even now humans fight for their survival. But I thought that was a very simple concept and fairly well proven uh, to be one in which you can do human values and, and, and it could be a successful show. Story elements were changed and the story morphed into what would become Battlestar Galactica. A lot of Glenn Larson's story ideas, elements and themes were inspired by the Mormon religion. Larson was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormon elements were incorporated into the original story of Battlestar Galactica, such as the Council of the Twelve, which in Mormon circles is the ruling body in the church, which is under the leadership of their prophet. The series would also refer to the 12 colonies of Kabul, which were named after the signs of the zodiac, came from the name Kalob, which is a star featured in the Mormon holy writings. Glenn Larson envisioned Battlestar Galactica as a series of made-for-TV movies, starting with a three-hour pilot and another two two-hour episodes for the ABC network. Larson's original draft of the script, titled Saga of a Star World, was written on March the 11th of 1977. It was then decided that instead of two additional movies, ABC would produce a weekly series of one-hour episodes. In the exciting three-parter Saga of the Star World, it starts off with the 12 colonies of man being defeated by a surprise attack on home soil from the Cylons, who have wiped out most of the cities, people, and almost the entire fleet. Commander Adama, with his last remaining Battlestar, the Battlestar Galactica, leads the remaining survivors of 220 ships to find the planet known as Earth. The Galactica's last line of defense is a ragtag group of fighter pilots led by Adama's son, Apollo, and his friend Starbuck to defend the large fleet of ships from the Cylons. All of the future Battlestar Galactica productions would share the same premise that in a distant part of the universe, a human civilization has extended in a group of planets known as the Twelve Colonies that have migrated from their homeworld of Cabal. Glenn Larson put together a special team of special effects experts, which was actually made up of a lot of the effects and concept artists who had worked on Star Wars. Special effects legend John Dykstra was hired to work on the series. Glenn Larson paid Dykstra a high salary and made him line producer, overlooking all of the special effects. However, Larson and Dykstra's working relationship was affected because Dykstra didn't feel it was right to release the show in a film format in cinemas and thought it wasn't the proper way to showcase his special effects work. 
which he designed for the television screen, not the big screen. After the ABC network decided to buy the series, Dijkstra chose not to stay, and so his producer credit would only appear on the three-part episode, Saga of the Star World, and the two-parter, Gun on Ice Planet Zero. The sixth episode, the two-parter, Gun on Ice Planet Zero, originally known as Gun, or the Ultimate Weapon, was shot straight after Saga of the Star World. The model work in Battlestar Galactica is incredible, and the effects were up to the standard of films like Star Wars. Television would never be the same again. Episodes were budgeted at over a million dollars each. To save money, they would reuse special effects shots where possible. Costume designer Jean-Pierre Doliac designed the look of the Cylon Centurions and based them on ancient Roman centurions. The Cylons had to be over six feet tall to make them look intimidating. A team of out-of-work basketball players were hired by Glenn Larson. The synthesized robot voices of the Cylons were accomplished by Michael Santiago using the EMS Vakoda 2000. By your command. This device was used to create the distinct sound of Kit. When his red eye moves side by side on the front of the car, on the other Glenn Larson series, Knight Rider. The distinct sound of the Viper, when it was launched on the Galactica, was also used when Kit's turbo boost was activated. Fantasy artist Frank Frazetta was hired to produce four promotional paintings for the series, all of which appeared in TV Guide and various other magazines. One of the paintings appeared on the cover of the novelization titled Battlestar Galactica 2, The Cylon Death Machine, which was published in early 1979. Famous artist Ralph McQuarrie, who created the concept art for Star Wars, also created the concept art for Battlestar Galactica. Evie, short for Evolution, was a chimpanzee owned by exotic animal trainer Ralph Helfer, who played the robot dog, Muffet, which is Boxy's pet Daggett, a dog-like animal, drone or robot. In casting Battlestar Galactica, John Colicus was cast as Baltar. He appeared in many films and TV roles. He appeared as the Klingon, Kor, in the original series of Star Trek Season 1, in Episode 26, Errand of Mercy, which was the first episode that introduced the Klingons. He reprised the role in several episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Dirk Benedict was cast as the ever-likable Lieutenant Starbuck. Benedict modelled the character after the character Maverick from the TV show Maverick. Don Johnson was originally up for the role of Starbuck, but he lost out to Dirk Benedict because of his southern accent. Richard Hatch was cast as Captain Apollo. According to Richard Hatch, Apollo was originally named several days into production. Hatch's favourite episode is The Lost Warrior, which was the western-themed episode of Galactica. Lorne Green from the highly successful TV series Bonanza was cast perfectly in the role of Commander Adama. Herbert Jefferson Jr. played Lieutenant Boomer, and Terry Carter played Colonel Ty. Terry Carter was initially cast as Lieutenant Boomer, but after he broke his ankle while skating at Venice Beach, he was unable to play the more physical part of Boomer. So Larson cast Carter as Colonel Ty instead. The young Boxy was played by Noah Hathaway, who was later known for playing Atreyu in the fantasy classic the Never Ending Story in 1984. Boxy is adopted and raised by Apollo after his mother, Serena, played by the beautiful Jane Seymour, dies after being shot in the back by a Cylon. Originally, her character was going to be killed off by Pluton poisoning at the hands of the Cylons, but test audiences found her death too depressing to her dying after being shot in the back by a Cylon. In the episode Lost Planet of the Gods, Part 2. When the dying scene was filmed, the cast actually cried, for real, in the scene. Marin Jensen played Lieutenant Athena, and Lorette Spang played Cassiopeia. Jonathan Harris, from Lost in Space, provided the voice of Lucifer, the Cylon of the Imperious Leader series, who was Baltar's assistant and executive officer 
Aboard the base star, he commanded. Lloyd Bridges played Commander Kane, a part Richard Crenna was originally going to play. Anne Lockhart played Lieutenant Sheba. In the opening credits, the opening narration was spoken by Patrick McNee, who also provided the voice of the Imperious Leader and was the guest star in the episode War of the Gods, playing the character Count Iblis. A feature film was released and was cut down to two and a half hours from the three-part pilot, Saga of a Star World. It was released in foreign markets and in Canadian theatres before the TV series was even aired to recoup budgetary expenses. A film version was released much later on in US, European and Australian cinemas. The theatrical version was released in US cinemas in the spring of 1979 following the series original run. In the theatrical cut, Baltar was beheaded in the Imperious Leader's chamber where in the series his life was spared. There was also new dialogue by Patrick McNee who played the Imperious Leader. After this first feature, there was two other Battlestar Galactica films released in cinemas. Mission Galactica, The Cylon Attack, and Conquest of Earth, which were both made up of various episodes from the original series and the second series, Galactica 1980. During the run of the original series, George Lucas and 20th Century Fox brought a lawsuit against Glenn Larson because they felt the series had similarities to Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. But the lawsuit was dropped in 1980. After the original season run, the network was already preparing to start production on Season 2. Seven scripts were already written for Season 2, but due to the cancellation of the series, that would never happen. The show was mainly cancelled due to declining ratings, and the show was over budget mainly due to the special effects. ABC sadly cancelled the series in April of 1979. The final episode was titled The Hand of God. Battlestar Galactica even released a small toy line of action figures and spaceships and as I seem to remember model kits of the ships. I distinctly remember owning the model kit of the Viper at the age of seven. Marvel even published a comic book series of 23 issues, which were released between 1978 and 1981. A second series called Galactica 1980 was aired, but the quality, especially in the writing, was not there. And some of the original characters, like Apollo, were not featured. And the show was set some 20 years later, featuring Boxy as a grown man. In the series, they finally find Earth. However, the second series was short-lived, and was eventually cancelled due to poor ratings. To be honest, the only highlight of Galactica 1980 was the episode featuring Dirk Benedict called Return of Starbuck, which was the best episode of the season. I look back at Battlestar Galactica with very fond memories and remember distinctly watching the series when it aired. I even remember my parents buying the action figures for me at Kmart I also remember pretending to be Starbuck when playing with my friends in the backyard. The show was epic in every way. Quality writing, with the exception of a couple of bad episodes that could be construed as downright laughable and campy, but this was not often. The show was quality entertainment and featured so many well-respected actors like Lorne Green, a true acting giant of TV, Lloyd Bridges, John Colicus, Lee Ayres, and Patrick McNee. Even rock star Rick Springfield appeared in the show, and the show featured great young actors of the time, including Dirk Benedict and the late great Richard Hatch. And the show featured some amazing music by Stu Phillips. Battlestar Galactica truly stands out as the best science fiction series of the 1970s and beyond. My name's Jonathan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like what you see on my channel, please subscribe and if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, click on the link below.